Hey, welcome back to Sober Now. I'm Jim LaPierre, and today I want to talk with you about the holiday season that is upon us. Sadly, for most of us in recovery, at least early on, the holiday season is usually pretty rough. Uh, ideally, it would be a time where we relax, gather with people we like, and enjoy some festivities. But instead, uh, it's typically a time where we feel really stressed and kind of naturally reflective. There's something about holidays and the end of one year and the start of another one that kind of make us take stock of where we've been, where we're going. Uh, unfortunately, it's a time of year where a lot of us feel obligated to spend time with people that we don't like uh, because we feel guilty if we don't. And there's a lot of things that we tend to lump together here. So this is the time of year when I start listening to people talk about their seasonal affective disorder, which has the greatest acronym ever, SAD. Now, don't get me wrong, seasonal affective disorder is a very real condition, and folks who live in the Pacific Northwest, folks in Alaska, folks who live in places that go really long periods of time without sunlight, oftentimes struggle with that condition. But for the rest of us, I think sometimes it's just a really convenient excuse. I don't think it's a coincidence that the time of year in which people experience seasonal affective disorder is during the holiday season. All of the financial stress we experience, all of the feelings of guilt and obligation, and then the setup that we too often put ourselves through. Now, what I mean by that is quite often we invent hopes, dreams, and we lie to ourselves. We go back to our families of origin, we go back to familiar places, and we tell ourselves, this time it's gonna be different. This time it's gonna be great. This time uh, they'll be nice. This time I won't relapse. This time, whatever that lie is, uh, we have a way of convincing ourselves that first of all, we have to fulfill things that we feel obligated to do. And secondly, because we know it's likely to be disappointing, and we're people who feel like we've already had enough disappointment for several lifetimes, thank you, we somehow entertain the false hope that it'll be different this year. And then when it's not, when it turns out to be what it always is, instead of being upset <clears throat> with the people who hurt us, we get upset with ourselves and we get mad and we say, well, what did I expect? Or why did I think it was gonna be any different? And that kind of false hope is more than enough to derail what you know is altogether too predictable. For too many of us uh, coming from unhealthy families, birthdays, holidays, uh, the times that we knew were supposed to be special were just disappointing. And so we struggle to create new traditions or to develop chosen family or to make things different. And if we have children, then we're usually trying to do the exact opposite of what our parents did. But the hard part is we have to get a little bit creative because our needs deserve to be met too. And we deserve to be celebrated. We deserve to have uh, a festive holiday season. We deserve to overcome anniversary dates and times of year that traditionally have been hard for us. And we need a lot of help with that. So I say make a plan. Make sure that you have a few elements to this plan, whatever you're doing this holiday season. First and foremost, have a relapse prevention plan. Identify the things that are likely to put you at risk of wanting to drink or use. Identify ahead of time what are the things that you're going to do if those cravings hit, if you feel triggered, and make sure that you have an escape plan. Whether you're visiting family, you're at a work party, whatever it is, make sure that you have transportation so that if you need to leave that event, you can do so immediately. Too often in the holiday season, um, folks want to share alcohol and we don't necessarily know if everything at the party is safe to drink. Please don't feel like you have to explain to anybody why you don't drink. You can come up with any number of reasons. Uh, you can just say, I'm sorry, I'm on medication. You can say, uh, what a lot of my friends in recovery use as a joke is, I'm allergic to alcohol. Every time I drink, I break out in handcuffs. Uh, you can simply say, no, I just don't care to, or it's not part of my current health regime. You don't owe anybody an explanation, but too often we feel like we have to tell people the whole story, otherwise they won't understand us. So my hope for you is that you stay safe this holiday season, that your recovery is your highest priority, 
My hope is that you are rigorously honest with yourself so that you're not putting yourself in harm's way. And unfortunately, as hard as it is to acknowledge, for a lot of us, just being around our family of origin is putting ourselves in harm's way. So again, keep yourself safe. <clears throat> Allow yourself to express sadness. Don't just label yourself or consider more and more reasons why we are the way we are. Work towards accepting yourself as you are. Allow people to encourage and support you. And most of all, have people in your life that are holding you accountable so that this holiday season is one that you get to remember sober. As always, please connect with me, Jim, at SoberNow.com. Take excellent care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you again soon.